Is yoga actually demonic and dangerous? Or is just this some crazy paranoia from these Christians who think everything is demonic? Well, I am a certified yoga instructor, technically. I studied yoga for many years personally and actually got certified with hundreds of hours of training. Went to Thailand, studied and practiced yoga more professionally. I know Ashtanga yoga, Kundalini yoga, done Bhakti yoga, a lot of different yogas. You got Bikram, hot yoga. There's so many different yogas, but is yoga itself somehow demonic? And just to be clear, stretching and exercise, that is not demonic. If anyone thinks stretching and exercise is demonic, they, they know very little about anatomy and about health because stretching is very healthy. That's why basically all athletes do it. It is amazing for the body to stay limber, is to improve your longevity, to improve your quality of life, having a healthy body. But is yoga just stretching and exercise? Well, no, it's not. It's actually a spiritual philosophy that was given to the ancient sages of India. It's Hinduism. The scriptures are called the Vedas, and in the Upanishads, which is one part of the Vedas, the whole spiritual pursuit of yoga is outlined. And the word yoga itself means to be yoked with. Not yoked with Jesus Christ, yoked with Brahma, which is a Hindu deity that embodies the idea of the God consciousness, the divine. The whole objective of yoga is to merge yourself with the quote-unquote divine which is the source energy, that we are actually this source energy, but we're unaware of it and we need the realization, the samadhi or the moksha, which is that state of realization of your divine inherent self where you break free from the cycle of suffering and then you reach enlightenment. It's very similar to Buddhism, Taoism with nirvana and breaking out of the whole cycle of reincarnation because reincarnation is a part of the Hindu religion as well. And yoga, not just that, but has many different gods and goddesses that are worshipped, different poses worship different gods and goddesses, uh, the sun sequences, the lunar sequences, which are poses done in a specific manner to worship the sun, to worship the moon. In bhakti yoga, you actually summon demons, Shiva, Shakti, Vishnu, Brahma, you actually sing and summon these beings to come give you peace, give you uh, love, to give you these different things. It's spirit worship, and it's just like a Ouija board. You do this, you will get demon-possessed, and you will need them cast out in Jesus' name. However, modern westernized yoga, is that demonic? Because most of it, and I know this, is pretty far from its Hindu roots, but is it still dangerous for a Christian to do? Well, it depends. Most of the time, yes, because to be a yoga instructor, you have to learn the Hindu philosophy from the Upanishads, which I just outlined. You have to learn about this to truly be a yoga instructor. So is all yoga somehow this Hinduism and this merging yourself with a God consciousness, this whole spiritual discipline, or is it just stretching and exercise? Because a lot of people go just for stretching and exercise and they're wondering like, is this bad? Well, the thing is, these teachers, since they study the Hindu discipline, they actually embody most of the time these beliefs. Most people are seeking peace. They're seeking love. They're seeking to break out of the suffering that's in the world. Every major religion knows there's something wrong with the world. You know, how do we get out of suffering? How do we break the cycle of suffering? Buddhism, Taoism, uh, Hinduism, they're all seeking to break out of this suffering for true peace, for true love, for true comfort. So they think that this is the answer. And these teachers many times devote their lives to this being their source of wellness, their source of health, their source of peace in life. They don't know Christ. You know, they don't get their peace from the Prince of Peace. They don't truly know God most of the time. So they seek this alternative spirituality to fill this void in their heart that we all have because of sin. There is something wrong with the world. It's called sin. And Jesus Christ came to break the chains of sin in our lives and to free us, to give us freedom and to save us from hell, which is the result of sin. 
Now, these yoga instructors will guide you into these meditations, will guide your mind into these different feelings of light and love and peace. And it might sound great. It might sound amazing, but there's no Jesus. There's no word of God. There's nothing that's actually drawing you to the truth, but this trance-like state that you're meant to achieve where actually leaving your body is encouraged to leave your body and to get into this divine state of consciousness, they call it, where you're out of your body and you, you know the true illusion of yourself and you break out of your emotions. You, you become the witness, the observer to all your thoughts that you actually aren't your thoughts. You're actually greater observing your thoughts and you are God, but you just forgot it. They might not say that specifically, but many times the techniques, the visualizations, and the meditations do guide the soul towards that. Now, the thing is, there are actual spirits, just like there's spirits and demons involved in creating doctrine, as we know in the book of Timothy, and in the different false religions and deceptions that don't add up. And, you know, many people say, oh, every religion's the same. Every religion is pointing to God and you can get to God in many different ways. Well, no, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except by him. Jesus Christ is the way. And when you think that all the religions are the same, okay, what about the religion that says Jesus didn't die on a cross? Did he die on a cross? Like there are historical truths that are debated. So every religion is not the same and the beliefs they have are not the same. You know, that there is no good and evil. It's merely an illusion. We need to break out of that yin and yang to create this peace and this, you know, or do we have multiple lives or do we have one life and then the judgment? Or do we have many lives? Do we have, should we have a caste system because of karma? And then poor people automatically are considered somehow bad because they must have done something bad in a past life. That's karma. That's the caste system. That's evil. However, karma is used very... Uh, lackadaisically and casually in our society, in our pop culture. And so is the practice of yoga. It's very casual. It's very lackadaisical without an understanding of the true spiritual precautions that need to be taken when you're trying to be healthy in a post-Christian era world. Yoga is demonic in itself. And there are a whole pantheon of demons involved in this and just like spirits can give doctrines to people, they gave them to the ancient sages, the Vedas, the Upanishads, to lead people away, to lead those humans away from knowing Yahweh, from knowing their God and their creator. Now you look, many people will adopt this instead of being on fire for God. Many Christians who start to get into yoga, you know, they're going through things. They're depressed. They're anxious. They're unhealthy. They want to turn their life around. Many do. You know, many do just do it for stretching and exercise and they get healthy. They lose weight. They, you know, battle certain ailments they're dealing with and it's really great for them. But the risk is that you start falling in to this spirit that tries to guide you into this path away from your true path, which is in Christ. Your true identity is found in Christ, but it'll try and guide you into this whole pursuit to heal your heart, to bring you that love, to bring you that peace. You have to do this. You have to do that meditation. You have to do this practice. You need to, and then it's not even for physical benefits. It's for spiritual benefits that people are doing it. It's not just to stretch your hamstrings and stay limber and stay fit and, you know, prevent injury and in athletics. No, it's to fill this area of your heart that needs peace. And so many Christians, I was in the new age and I saw most people grew up Christian in a Christian family, Christian home, going to church. I didn't. I personally did not. I didn't know anything about the Bible until three years ago, less than three years ago. But so many people grow up in that and they're in a dry church. They're in a church where they see no demonstration of the power, only preaching of the word. Yet Apostle Paul said he didn't just preach the word. He demonstrated the Spirit's power to build people's faith. So their pe people's faith might be built on that, the power of God, not just the preaching of the word. And that's what we need in the church today. And when people don't see that, they fall into these other, you know, new age practices where they see all of this power. They see all of this, whoa, supernatural abilities, psychic abilities. Whoa, you know, I, I've never felt this much peace. I've never, you know, experienced this. 
because they've never experienced the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit and the love and the fire of the Holy Spirit truly burning in their hearts. They might be saved. They might have faith in Jesus Christ unto salvation, but they might not truly know him to the depths that God wants them to know him. They might not truly, fully know him. So they go into these other pursuits to get that part that God is trying to give them. That's why many people get into yoga. And the danger is you get into this, you stop, you know, having a love for the word, having a love for the Lord. And you end up going to this, sharing quotes about mindfulness, sharing quotes about peace and not really any scripture anymore, not really sharp word of God. And just this fire starts to go down and then lukewarmness. And then, oh, wait, Jesus actually went to India between his teenage years and when his ministry started at age 30, he actually went to Egypt and studied in the hermetic principles and was a yogi and reincarnated. Then all these heresies come in about the divinity of Christ and then once they lose the divinity of Christ, that Jesus Christ is God, that he came and died on the cross to save people from their sin who have faith in him. Once that faith is lost, Satan has their soul. This is what it all hinges upon, the divinity of Jesus Christ and his work on the cross. He did resurrect. He was resurrected. He did ascend into heaven. The Bible is real. And the more science we have, the more evidence we have for its reality. It's incredible. It is literally amazing how real the Bible is, but it fades this conviction, this understanding fades when you start getting into yoga, you start getting into new age practices, and you start finding your peace from there instead of from God, of from Jesus and his word. I hope this gives some revelation on what yoga truly is and what the dangers might be if you are a Christian or you're not and you think I'm crazy for thinking this. I don't know what to say. This is where I've arrived in life. I studied, I traveled, I really was just seeking truth and I found the truth in Jesus Christ. When you see an actual demon look at you, when you see actual supernatural phenomenon and then you see the power of Christ and casting these demons out and the level of healing, the level of true just love for people and power that changes people's lives like that better than any rehab program, better than any pharmaceutical drug, better than any psychedelic experience, it changes you because you see the real power of our creator. And that's Jesus Christ. All the peace that you're looking for, all of the love, all the comfort is all in him. He's not just some dogmatic religious figure that was invented by the Catholic Church to control people, to get them worshiping a man instead of their true divine self so they can reach that higher state of consciousness. That is false. That is a lie. So you will not be a part of God's kingdom when he comes back because Jesus Christ is coming back. No, we're not ascending to the 5D only for those people who are awake and that, you know, religion, you know, Christianity is a cult. There are cults of Christianity, but the belief that Jesus Christ died 2000 years ago and actually resurrected and was witnessed by hundreds of people and then ascended into heaven publicly. And we have more evidence for this than most philosophers and emperors that we study about in school. That belief is not a cult. That belief is understanding of history and understanding of the truth. And I pray that God reveals this to you if you already aren't aware of this. And that if you are, that he takes you deeper into his word. He takes you deeper into the truth. So you can help people in deception who are slowly falling away. You can bring them back so they can fully fulfill their calling in life. 